Hi guys, welcome back to Too Cool for Middle School. It's the end of February, so I am doing a February book wrap up. I read eight books this month. I've kind of lost track of if that's like a lot or a little. I don't even, I don't even know. I don't have a goal or anything like that for this year. Last year I read a hundred. This year my only goal was to read less than that. I'm trying to like expand my activities a little more besides just reading so I don't know like what my what my pace is at the moment but um, at the end of every month I'm gonna be doing these little book wrap-ups and then just kind of like some favorites from the month so we'll do like skincare makeup clothes TV shows that I'm binge watching and stuff like that so check out January's video if you're a little bit lost and let's get into the February video so here's my little stack over here of all the books that I read in February Sometimes there's like a nice little color palette that emerges from the books that I've read. <laughs> this month that, that did not happen. <laughs> this isn't like the prettiest stack, but whatever. The first one that I read was History Smashers Women's Right to Vote. I have been really impressed with this like series by Kate Messenger. I read the one about the Mayflower and then this one was great. I mean, it's not super long. Eh, it's like almost 200 pages, but less than 200 pages. You know, it's fairly small and there are some pictures and stuff. So this is accessible for students, but honestly, as a history teacher reading this, I learned a lot. I think she does a really good job of making sure that we're seeing like the full scope of all of the women who were involved in the women's movement and securing the right to vote and you know it starts a century before we ever do get the right to vote and so there are a lot of different people included in this book and I just think is well done overall. So I highly recommend it for history teachers and for your history classrooms. I guess this could be a good one for like Women's History Month. Isn't that what March is like coming up? So all of these books I will link below on my bookshop.org account. I'm moving away from sending people over to Amazon. I would rather send you to bookshop.org to purchase books because they support independent bookstores. And then also it's just like a really nice setup. Like you can see the covers of all of the books and it's just like laid out really nicely. I have lots of little lists over there. The next book that I read was Mr. Penumbra's 24 hour bookstore and I actually only bought this book because I was looking for a book with a yellow spine. I'm working on making this little section right here like a little more Roy G. Biv-ified and so I just like searched on the internet for books with yellow covers. And I ended up really, really liking this book. It reminds me a lot of Hank Green's, I forget what the first one's called actually, but um, this one is the A Beautifully Foolish Endeavor. So they're very, very similar just because um, they include a lot of like code cracking and like having to work together as a team and like use each person's different knowledge in order to like solve this riddle. This one is a little bit less sci-fi than the Hank Green books, but for me, I just really like this kind of weird subgenre that seems to have emerged. So it obviously takes place in a bookstore. It's in San Francisco. And then like Google plays a really big part in this story, like in the plot. And it has like your smart engineer girl and then like the graphic designers, like all of those same like similar features with the Hank Green books. Um, but this one kind of looks at the idea of, I mean like, Google seems like this really risky thing, you know, like just allowing all of this knowledge to be out there. And it kind of ties it back to like the beginning of like the printing press and how that was also pushed forward by these people who were willing to take risks and really just like wanted information to be out there. I think there were definitely a lot of things that he like left unexamined and like there they're always going into these situations that are really contentious and there's just like no violence which I mean which is nice but it just feels like at some point like someone's gonna pull a gun on somebody and they never do so I mean I like that but I just I don't know there were like these really high stakes but then like I don't know everybody got along very well <laughs> one thing that was just kind of nice in this book too is that like each of the characters just very much appreciates the talents of all the other characters and they tell them that like they, they just very much appreciate 
this guy's art skills and her code cracking skills and his design skills and they're just like very affirming of everybody so I mean it's just it's a fun one. The next one is Elatsue by Darcy Little Badger and I've been talking about this a lot lately on Instagram so we are going to be doing fantasy literature circles in my eighth grade English classes which are all online and so this is going to be one of the options that students can choose. Right now we're actually on our Anne Frank unit, but I previewed all of their book options the other day for them just so they would have a chance to like decide which book they want and figure out how they're gonna get it. I'll talk more about that in another video, but I did actually review this one already in another video if you wanna hear a little bit more about it. But it's really, really good. A lot of students seem to be interested in it so far. So it's a fantasy book, it's set in modern day America. It's in Texas. It takes place over the summer, which just the cover doesn't, you know, give off that vibe, but it's, it's during the summer. This is Elatsoe, or Ellie, and she's like 18 years old, which also, like, this doesn't really give off that vibe. So as beautiful as the cover is, it just doesn't really reflect the book at all, so. I like to explain what it's really about, um, but she is Apache, which is another reason why I chose this book specifically, because our high school mascot is the Apache, which I'm not a big fan of. I have a lot of reasons for not being in favor of that, but I just think also like reading a story from the perspective of someone who actually is Apache just makes it a little bit less comfortable to like appropriate someone else's identity without thinking. So. I think it'll be good if some of our students read this. Um, anyway, Ellie has magical powers, like a lot of the people in the book just have magical powers even though they live in like the normal world. And she can raise animals from the dead, so she had a dog who died and she raised it from the dead and so she has this like ghost dog with her the whole time, which is pretty fun. And this book is actually like a murder mystery, so it's a little bit suspenseful. Um, I would say that it has like a tinge of kind of get out style horror and sort of like faux historical fiction. Like there's a lot going on in this book and I really, really liked it. I enjoyed it so much. I think it's probably my favorite one of the month. It's technically young adults, but um, I think anybody would really enjoy this book. So highly recommend it. The next one is another young adult novel. Um, I was also looking for one with a purple spine, <laughs> so I ordered this one. I don't know if these are going to be tall enough though. Like I wanted them to be like this, like as tall as those, and I think they're just a little bit too short, but that's why I ordered this. And it also ended up being amazing. So this is a young adult romance novel. It also takes place in Texas, actually. Um, this is by Liara Tamani, and I really loved this book. I'm not, like, really itching to read a lot of young adult romance, but this one was just, like, so good. So it's about two characters, Carly and Rex, and they kind of have, like, a love at first sight thing, so that happens, like, right away. Um, they both play basketball. They both have just, like, some conflicts happening within their own families that they don't really want to talk about, but then, like, as they are getting closer and they kind of, you know, text all the time and talk on the phone and stuff. Um, you know, they're like any kind of strife in your family sometimes like makes you react in certain ways to other people and it like might not make sense to that person. So, you know, they get frustrated with each other and they overreact sometimes, which I think is good to, you know, like portray in a book because like as you're reading, there's all this dramatic irony and you're like, no, 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 just like listen to her or like just ask what's wrong. And so I think kind of by default is sort of like teaches teenagers like, like listen to what someone is saying, you know, and don't like react too harshly or too quickly. Like, you know, make sure you understand the situation before you make a decision. But I really loved both of the characters. I loved their families and it was just all around really good and it's one that I'm definitely comfortable with you know putting in my classroom I know that's always like kind of a something to be wary of when teachers are like oh, okay is this one like okay in my classroom am, am I gonna get in trouble for this one but I think this one's really good like eighth grade high school it's perfect this next one Charlie Hernandez and the League of Shadows by Ryan Calejo is another one that I'm including in the fantasy lit circles so this one is geared towards a little bit younger students it's definitely like a pure middle grades novel for your kids who like 
Percy Jackson and mythology series, this one is really good. So it's all based on Central and South American mythology. So the main character, Charlie, um, his abuela has told him all these stories growing up, you know, about these different mythological beings and you know he finds himself in this weird situation it's today's world but weird stuff is happening to him his parents have disappeared he's growing like weird animal <laughs> features like feathers and stuff and so he's trying to figure out what's going on and then he keeps running into all of these creatures that he recognizes from his abuela stories and so he has to rely on that knowledge of his culture in order to you know kind of like solve the riddles and fight these beings and like figure out what's going on so it's really funny it's really fast paced there's a lot of spanish in it and so if you speak spanish you'll have an advantage because it's just like quick to go through um and then if you don't though it still like explains what everything means so then you end up like picking up a lot of things along the way so if you teach middle school this is a great one to have in your library and there's also a sequel that i haven't read yet but i want to move on to that one the next one that I read was the February pick for Amory's Book Club. This one's called No Heaven for Good Boys by Keisha Bush. This is a really odd book. It reminds me of something that you would have to read in like high school or college where it's just this like horribly tragic story and you're just like why do we have to read this? <laughs> like this is so depressing. Like yes it's really well written and really great but like it's just so sad and it feels like there's like no hope at the end but we know that like those works are important too so you know i follow like the the instagram community that's all reading this book and a lot of people said that they felt like it was a book full of hope like ultimately but i didn't man it was it was just sad all the way through it's about these um boys from ones from like guinea and their families are muslim and so there's a practice of like sending your young boys to live with a islamic leader called a marabout and they're supposed to like train them in the quran but that's not what this guy does he's just like a con artist basically and he takes these boys and you know, just sends them out to beg all day and so I think that is like also technically part of what they're supposed to be doing but I mean he's definitely abusing it so he sends them out to beg all day they have to sleep on like cardboard mats he abuses them he beats them it's just awful and they're like these little kids and then um, this book like alternates back and forth between one of the mothers that was kind of like forced by the community to send her son to engage in this like traditional practice but she knows that it wasn't right she knows that she wants him back and she's like traumatized by it and it's she, she can't get him back that's just like you know there would be shame on their family if they ended the program early and then the boys don't want to be there but they can't run away because there are all these people out there who would like kill them and steal their organs it's just like it's all sad it's like a very important story to know about so it's just like one of those books where like you read this so that you like understand what actually happens in the world but I don't want to offer you any false hope I mean the the boys will just like steal your heart I loved reading about them but you're also just like I want to fix this and she does provide in the end like websites and resources and like ways to help so that that part's good this next one was very very different this is a fa love story by lone lee this one just came out i had had it pre-ordered like forever so pho is this like vietnamese soup that i love it's so good it's one of my favorite foods and so this is another young adult romance and it's really cool because it's written from the perspective of these two vietnamese kids in like the garden grove westminster area so if you're from southern california you'll like recognize a lot of the places that they talk about and there are a lot of Vietnamese refugees who resettled there after the war so both of their sets of parents were war refugees who came to the United States and um, they each set up restaurants so they are restaurant rivals so the two characters are really like not supposed to be friends but it's kind of like a Romeo and Juliet thing and they end up working together and falling in love and I loved their relationship it wasn't too over the top or cheesy or anything like that they're both kind of like trying to work out their family issues but also like find a way to make themselves happy and like think about what they want to do with their futures and it was just really really good it is 
400 pages long and I think it should be 300. So at around page 300, that's when the pace starts to pick up a little bit and things get a little bit more intense. I think there could have been 200 pages of exposition before that instead of 300. So I do think it was way too long. <laughs> but overall, I really, really enjoyed it. And every time I sat down to read it, I was just like in a trance and I would like order Vietnamese food and I've tried a few new dishes as a result of this book so <laughs> overall I loved it definitely going into my classroom okay the final book for February I wanted to make sure to read during this month my husband got me this one for Valentine's Day he's always trying to find a book that I haven't already read and I hadn't read this one yet it's called then she was gone by Lisa Jewell and a lot of people seem to like recognize this author I guess she writes a lot of kind of like thriller suspense mystery books. This one is very bizarre like it's the plot is so preposterous that it's like not very scary because you're like this is not really a thing that occurs <laughs> which is kind of perfect because then you can just like get lost in the story. It's definitely an escape because it's not really forcing you to think about anything real <laughs> but it is a thriller it is a mystery it's set in England and whenever I read you know books for escape I always like to read books that are set in England because they drink tea all the time and that reminds me to go get a cup of tea and then it's just like a very relaxing process altogether. I think I read this one in less than 24 hours. I kind of thought that I had figured out most of what happened pretty early on but then you definitely keep reading because you want to know if you were right or not. So it's suspenseful, it's escapist, it's just like if that's the type of book that you're looking for, this is a really good one for that. Okay, so those were the books. Now on to the favorites. First of all, this. This is a little matching set. I've got the sweatshirt and I've got the sweats right here. I'm loving a matching set these days. Um, this one is from LA Relaxed and they are an ethical company here in LA. So they, they use sustainable materials, you know, good labor practices and all of that. And oh my gosh, these are just so, so nice. So I have another one in like an oatmeal color and that one is super, super soft. So there's one style that's like cloud. It kind of has like fleeciness on the inside and that one's super comfortable. I have pictures on my Instagram if you wanna see what it looks like from head to toe. And then this one is a little bit like thicker. It's like thicker material feels like if you found an old sweatshirt from like the 70s that was super well made and then it had just been like washed a lot so it got really soft. It feels like that. I love it. I'm, I, you know, I think I used to make fun of people who would wear like matching sweatsuits but a year into quarantine and I've been worn down. I, I love it now. In my January video I was like, oh, I'm not really wearing that much makeup. I just had this really simple makeup routine but now I'm kind of like, I don't know, I have to stare at my own face all the time, every day on Zoom. So I've just kind of been back to regular amounts of makeup. I just use the Whaley Wong palette all over my face all the time. I actually tried quite a bit of new makeup this month and I was just like, just go back to my Whaley. So nothing really new to report makeup wise, but skincare wise, I do have a couple of favorites. I love this mist. This is the is it Biosance Squalene Squalene that doesn't sound attractive but I guess it's a good thing <laughs> and hyaluronic toning mist so this is my second bottle of this and like after I wash my face I just spray it liberally all over my skin before I do like serums and moisturizer and stuff like that so I love it and then I liked that brand so I thought I would try this sunscreen from them as well so this is a zinc sheer mineral sunscreen. I have to admit that since I had like not been leaving my house or going outside much at all, I kind of got out of the habit of wearing sunscreen for a little while and now it's warmed up a little bit and I was like, Ew, I gotta make sure that I'm doing that because I have like windows right here. Like I'm getting, you know, the rays and stuff all the time. So I'm back on my, my sunscreen regimen and I really like this one. Sometimes I can be picky about sunscreen because they kind of leave like a weird cast or they don't feel good or they make me break out but I think any that have zinc in them are good for people who are like acne prone so this one has been good for me. The other skincare brand that I have been loving is Alicia Keys, um, Keys Soul Care brand. I really like the jars that everything comes in. So this one is the mask and then I also have just like a like a moisturizer. Ooh. This is what the mask looks like inside. It's kind of like 
grayish brown <laughs> but then when you put it on your face it also has like little gold reflective pieces in there it kind of looks cool when it's on your face and makes your skin feel really good I also just love that like moisturizer I think she has a cleanser and a couple other things that you can get from this range I think it's at Ulta and it's just very nice and Alicia Keys always has you know the best skin she doesn't even wear makeup she's always all natural so yeah I was like whatever she uses I'll just I'll take that please and then the last favorite for this video is just what we have been binge watching lately so we got into his dark materials on HBO we just finished season one and we just started season two so somebody told me that Lin-Manuel Miranda was in it so I was like oh we must watch this then and it's based on like the Golden Compass books which I have not read but I did buy the first one because now I'm like all intrigued so it's fantasy it's like an alternate universe kind of similar to ours but people have like an animal that is always with them and it's well it's set in England and then like they're always talking about going to the north which I guess is like Greenland Iceland and there's like the Aurora Borealis up there um, so it kind of has like a Scandinavian feel to the names and the stories and stuff um, and so the HBO version is done really well um, we like the casting like we kept <laughs> just talking about that how like oh this actor is really cool I've never seen them before it's quite a bit of diversity in the casting I mean there's black people and white people there's not a whole lot of like other representation but like the special effects with the animals and stuff are really really cool and one thing that's just like very nice about the plot is that well like these children are taken they, they don't know what has happened to them and then this community is just like we're willing to fight for these children we're willing to like go to battle to get these kids back and I feel like that's not <laughs> always the case in a story like, like maybe they're willing to fight to like get their land back or like protect a resource or something but they just like it's not necessarily their own kid right but they all go fight to get these children back and I was like okay I like this <laughs> like this this feels very noble so um, it's it's like a little violent but it's not like um, something that like kids could not watch like it's it feels pretty family friendly you know definitely like middle school kids could watch it the main characters are children I think that the actress who plays Lyra does such a good job and then we love Roger he's our favorite and then the actress who plays um, Oh, I can't remember her name, but I'll just say the female scientist to like not give away too much of the plot, but she does such a good job. <laughs> She's kind of like odd, but she, she just does a really good job. So yeah, that's just kind of been our like enjoyable show that we've been watching lately. Jensen and I always have to watch a house show before we go to bed. That's what Jensen has to watch like to, I don't know, calm down and fall asleep. So we've gone through like everything on my Hulu app and now we're on Good Bones. I really like Good Bones. I like, you know, the houses once they're completed. They look really cool. And then we did um, Hidden Potential. That one was really good as well. <laughs> so thanks to Jensen. You know, I've been watching my fair share of home improvement shows. All right, well that is everything. I really look forward to these end of the month like wrap up favorites videos. I think these are really fun. So if you like this style of video, give it a thumbs up just so that I know like, okay, this is something that you would like to see every month. Um, feel free to leave some comments. If there are any other like categories of things that you want me to include in favorites, or if you have any book recommendations that I should be reading in March. So thank you so much for watching guys, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.